from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. I will ask, sorry, I will not ask for a show of hands who may have looked at the bulletin already. The uh, bulletin, my article, which I know you all cling to every word every week, um, I sometimes have a theme similar, sometimes a theme different than uh, my homily. And this week, if you've already read the bulletin, it will be similar that does not give you an excuse not to read my article later when you go home. Doesn't give you that. But uh, to let you know that there is an overlap this week for sure. If you think for a moment as a uh, American people, probably far beyond America, but certainly as an American people, we have a basic attitude that we cannot wait for things. We can't wait. From the time we're very little, we can't wait until we get old enough to go to school with our older brothers and sisters or friends in the neighborhood. And once we're in school, we can't wait till we are old enough to make our first penance and our first Holy Communion. And once we make our first Holy Communion, we can't wait until we get into junior high to be with the older kids. And once we're in junior high with the older kids, we can't wait till we get into eighth grade and once we're in eighth grade, we can't wait until we graduate and get to high school. And once we get to high school, we can't wait till we get on the right sports team or different organizations or programs. And once we're into those, we can't wait till we're confirmed and we no longer have to go to a religious education class. And once we are confirmed, then we can't wait until we finish high school, and in that senior year of high school, we can't wait until we get that acceptance letter from the college or university of our choice, and once we have that letter, we definitely cannot wait for graduation to come. Once we graduate and we get to college, we can't wait until we finish college. And once we finish college, we can't wait to buy our new car. We can't wait to be out on our own have our own place to live away from our parents. And once we have that place to live on our own, then we can't wait until we find the right girl, the right guy, and we decide to get married. And once we get married, we can't wait until we have children. And once we have children, we can't wait till we own our own house, a bigger house. And once we have the bigger house and the children, we can't wait for our children to get to school. And then we can't wait for them to make their first penance and their first Holy Communion. We can't wait for our children to graduate from eighth grade. We can't wait for them to get to high school. We certainly can't wait for them to graduate from high school. We can't wait for them to get into college. We can't wait for them to graduate from college. We certainly can't wait for them to get a real job with real money. And uh, we certainly also can't wait for them to get their own apartment. And once they have that own apartment, we can't wait for them to get married. And once they're married, we can't wait till we have grandchildren. And once we have grandchildren, we can't wait for them to come visit, right? And once they come visit shortly after it begins, we can't wait till they go home. We generally spend our entire lives not being able to wait. 
we have that um, attitude almost within us, an anxiousness. What does Advent call us? To go the direct opposite direction, to wait, to watch, and to pray. And as we begin this uh, season of Advent, we think about those three simple words and maybe make those three simple words a, a mantra for ourselves over the course of the season, to wait, to watch, to pray. What does it mean to wait? It means to be vigilant, to be ready at a moment's notice, as the gospel reminds us today for the call of Christ to come home. I remember the last year of my father's life as I would visit him at uh, Brothers of Mercy daily. It was almost a routine he and I had. In the time of the visit, after I said hello, I would ask him, what are you doing? And his answer always was, I'm waiting. And I would ask, what is it that you're waiting for? And he would look at me square in the eye and say, you know. And I did know because he was waiting to go home to the Lord. He had entered in the last year of his life a very contemplative part of his life where I knew without doubt, without question, he was ready to go home to the Lord. And he was waiting to go and join my mother, his brothers, his parents, all of the family and friends who've gone before us. We wait. And what is it we're waiting for that unknown day or hour. We're waiting with longing for that unknown day and hour to see the Lord. So we wait, we watch. And what is it that we do when we watch? We watch, I think, really, to be graced enough in life to see the presence of Christ in our life each and every day. We watch in very large ways, very simple ways, daily, how Jesus is revealing himself to us in our very midst. It may come from someone asking for help. It may come from a card, a note, a letter, an individual we interact with at work. But usually we know when we have a meaningful conversation and interaction with someone, we know, we walk away kind of renewed and invigorated inside because we know we had a real moment where we shared the gift of our lives with another. And in that gift of our lives, hopefully recognize the presence of Christ. We're to watch for that presence of Christ. You know, for those of you who were at Mass on Thanksgiving Day, um, we had someone on the way into church by the front door who appeared to be homeless. And he had his Tim Hortons cup for money. And um, he received many and varied reactions as people came in to church. At that mass, at offertory time, we took a collection for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And after the collection was brought forward, that young homeless person came forward with his cup and emptied all of the money into the basket. And it was at that time that I introduced that young homeless person as one of our seminarians, because I planted him there. And I wanted to see how he would be received. And um, today he was guilty of texting in church. He came to the 1230 Mass here at St. Greg's and he texted me at the beginning of Mass. And he said, on Thursday, Pretty much everybody was very kind to me at St. Greg's when I was homeless and dirty and torn clothing. He said, today I'm dressed nice and I'm showered and somebody threw me out of the bench because I was sitting in their seat. <laughs> we better watch. <laughs> we better watch simply because um, in our midst, we have many invitations where we are called to see Christ. And sometimes we don't recognize him. Wait, watch, and pray.
most important element of our life, our day, is to pray. And last week at JREV, we had adoration. And say two-thirds of the teenagers who were there, you know, I had asked, how many of you have been on the retreats already? And about two-thirds of them raised their hands. And I said, so you know what we're about to do with the adoration? And I asked them, I said, how many of you really experienced something in the prayer of adoration, if it be on the eighth grade retreat or the overnight confirmation retreat, how many of you experienced Christ or a peace that you've not experienced before? And they all raised their hands because they truly experienced prayer. A suggestion as we begin the new church year and hopefully make some resolution for what we're going to do Pray as much as you text or talk on the cell phone. If you make that commitment each and every day to really steep yourself in time of genuine communication with God, you will see tremendous transformation in your very life. We wait, we watch, and we pray.